In the last video, we saw a training algorithm for decision trees. However, we constrained ourselves then to datasets with a classification target and purely categorical features. In this video, we'll extend our view and we'll start with what to do when your features are numeric. In that case, we can think of the incoming instances at a particular potential split as lying across the number line, and we can choose for our split simply a particular threshold t. The node then splits the segment in two. The instances for which the feature is lower than t go to the child on the left, and the instances for which the feature is higher than t go to the child on the right. And we know that to compute the optimal threshold, we only need to look at numeric values halfway between two instances with a different class. We simply compute the information gain for every possible such threshold and choose the threshold which provides the highest information gain. We saw a classifier with such numeric features in the opening lecture. We also saw that when we actually train a decision tree on these two numeric features, we get quite a complex decision boundary as a result. The reason this is possible is that when we use numeric features, it does make sense to split twice on the same feature. Because the second time we split on the same feature, we can use a different threshold. And that's what you're seeing here. Several different splits on the same feature. What we also saw is that such models are very likely to overfit. The larger the tree grows, the more likely it is to overfit the data. And what we see in this plot is the accuracy we get for a tree limited to a particular size of nodes. And as we let this maximum grow, the training accuracy increases, but the validation accuracy actually begins to decrease very quickly. A clear sign that the model is overfitting. To reduce overfitting, we can prune a tree. This is done by withholding some of our training data. And after training the complete and likely overfitting tree, we simply work backwards from the leaves. For each internal node whose children are only leaves, we simply check on our withheld data whether the classification accuracy of the tree is better with or without that node. And if it's worse, then we remove the node. And then we simply keep pruning leaves until the performance stops improving. It's important to note that when we do this, we are using a validation set to guide our search algorithm. This means that if we are also using a validation set, for instance, to select whether we're using a KNN classifier or a decision tree, then the pruning should happen on a withheld part of the training data, not on the same validation data that we use for our hyperparameter selection. If we use our hyperparameter validation data both to prune our decision tree and to decide between a decision tree and a KNN classifier, then the decision tree gets access to the validation data during training, but the KNN classifier doesn't. To understand this, imagine what happens when we train our final model, supposing that we've selected a decision tree. During training, we cannot use the test set to do our pruning. We can only see the test set when we've decided what our final model is going to be. And our first train validation split should simulate this situation. So we cannot use the orange validation set in this picture for controlling our search. This happens in various other search algorithms as well. For instance, in early stopping in neural network training. So we've seen decision trees that use numerical features. But what happens if our target label is numerical? In this case, the model is called a regression tree. And we can follow the same basic approach as we did for decision trees, but we have to answer a few questions first. The first is how do we label the leaves? Once we've made a few splits, we get a subset of our training data at the leaf node, and we should use the target values in this subset to decide what label goes on the leaf node. Here we don't have something like a majority class, but we can easily label the leaves with the mean or the median of the training instances in the resulting segment. In general, if our target label is broadly normally distributed, the mean makes a lot of sense, and if we have more of a long tail, then the median makes more sense. The second question we need to answer is what measure we use to decide which split is preferable. We can't compute entropy over the target values in our subsets of the data, because most likely they'll all be different. However, variance measures a very similar property. The bigger the spread of the output labels, the less certain we are about what the value of the leaf node should be. The best split results in a large reduction of average variance over the created segments. 
So if we take our information gain measure from before, and we simply replace the entropies with variances, we end up with an information gain measure that we can apply to numerical target values. We've seen before what a regression tree looks like over a single numerical feature, and we can note two things. Clearly, the regression tree splits many times on this one feature, and clearly here too, there's a lot of overfitting going on, so some regularization is called for. If you have two numeric features, you can visualize a regression tree in this way. Tree models are a classic example of a model class that provides a generalization hierarchy. At one end of the hierarchy, the model class provides both very simple and low capacity models, like constant models, which output just one value over all instances, that is, a tree without any splits, or stumps, trees that make just one split. These are low capacity models with high bias and low variance, also known as underfitting models. As we let the tree grow, we reach the other end of our hierarchy, where we find the full depth tree models. These are large, high capacity models, which are very likely to memorize irrelevant details of the training data and overfit a lot. These models are likely to have high variance and low bias. We've seen one way of dealing with this, which is to regularize the model by pruning. But the result of that is simply a tree that is somewhere in the middle of this hierarchy. The full power of decision trees, and the reason they are so popular as models these days, comes not from how useful a single tree is, but from how useful it can be to create a collection of decision trees, called a forest, and to combine all of their predictions into a single prediction. This is an example of a model ensemble, a collection of multiple models that work together to create a single prediction. And this is what we'll discuss in the final two videos of this lecture.